Hi, my name is Julie Barger. I am a teacher in the infants classroom. Uh, my children range in ages of six weeks to 12 months. We are at Stonebrook Day School. We're called the Ducklings. And today we're gonna discuss um, my role as a reflective teacher in an infant classroom. And when I think of being a reflective teacher, uh, three things come to mind. Open-mindedness, responsibility, and wholeheartedness. To me, open-mindedness is being willing to change your preconceived beliefs about how a child learns and being able to change your teacher scripts. For me, one of my biggest scripts I've had to work with is that's not safe. Um, with infants, we tend to hover and want to make sure that they are protected and no harm comes to them. Last year, I went to Boulder uh, Journey School in Colorado, and one of the big things uh, that I took away from there was a phrase that they kept repeating that you have to be as safe as necessary, not as safe as possible. Since we do tend to hover, a lot of times the children are going to miss out on opportunities that are learning experiences. Um, we do have to make sure they're safe, yes, but we also have to keep in mind that an injury can also be a learning experience. Back during the holidays, we had lights strung around the classroom and many of our babies were interested in them and wanted to touch them. My first thought was, that's dangerous, maybe we should move them out of reach. I had to step back and see what learning experience we could have with something as simple as Christmas lights. So we brought the lights down on the floor and plugged them up. We let the babies hold them and pull on them. A few even stuck them in their mouth for a second or two. We posted pictures in our classroom uh, Facebook page and a couple parents were concerned that the lights were plugged up. We had to set their minds at ease by making sure they knew the babies were completely supervised the whole time. Another script that I struggle with, not only me but also with my parents, is that they are too young to do certain activities. Infants can do all the activities that our older children do. We may just have to modify them and make sure that we supervise a little more. For example, one of our recent investigations was with light and shadows. My babies love when we bring out the projector in the classroom. We place it on the floor on their level and let them crawl all over it, bang on it, and check out the neat images it can project on the walls, floors, and ceilings. They quickly learned how to move the objects on the projector to display a different shadow. Our long-term investigation that we've been working on for several months now is sound. We have a sensory board in the classroom that has a door stopper. One of our boys discovered that when he pulled on the stopper and let it go, it made a really cool boing sound. Once he started to explore with the stopper, several of our other children followed him. We began to video and take pictures of the children and noticed that from the stopper, they moved into banging on different services with all types of items. We felt sound was the driving reason, however, we initially thought music for the vibrations. We asked one of the parents in the school to come in and play some instruments for us. While a couple of the babies really enjoyed this, most of them were upset with the sound the instruments made. The banging continued, however, so we quickly realized it wasn't music. They seemed to be interested in sounds with anything. They were exploring force and tones with all the materials available. We began to bring in items such as pots, pans, and wooden spoons, sensory bottles, blocks, drums, cymbals, tambourines. We even tried headphones to see what their reaction to silence would be. This exploration is continuing and will be a part of A Child's Guide to the City in April. We will be taking several of our children to the Murphy Springs Discovery Center in Murfreesboro for a sound exhibit. <laughs>
As a reflective teacher, we also have to be responsible, not only for how our children learn, but for what they are learning. Our infants are not able to tell us verbally what they're interested in, but if we're watching and observing, then we should be seeing facial expressions, body language, that lets us know if something they're doing is something that they're interested in or something that maybe we should try again later. We also are responsible as a teacher for knowing their developmental needs and their capabilities. Every child at a different age is capable of doing certain things and we need to make sure that we're not forcing them into doing things before they're ready. It is our job to encourage and make sure that they feel supported and comfortable when those times come. We need to be there to make sure that when they're ready to sit up, they're ready to pull up or stand or walk, that we're not pushing it, but we're there and they know that they are comforted and that they are safe. In our classroom, our curriculum is open and fluid. We use a webbing system. We start with a topic that seems to be reoccurring or developmental and expand on ways to present that to our babies from there. Then we post that web on our wonder wall and connect it to pictures or even QRG codes we make for videos. This makes our learning visible to all who visit our classroom. We also are responsible for setting up provocations and changing our environment to stimulate the children's learning, if it's need variety. A reflective teacher means that you put your all into teaching. You are willing to change and be flexible for your children's needs, not the other way around. You need to bring yourself to the class every day, 110%. Things may be going on outside, but you need to make sure that you set those to the side and make it a enjoyable and fun day for you and the children. You need to make sure that you're learning alongside the kids. Don't just observe, get down and play with them. Teaching is not an easy job, but it is very rewarding and will be one of the most rewarding things that you do. In closing, I hope that this helps many of you. And if you have any further questions that I can help you with, please contact us at stonebrookds at gmail.com. Thank you.